this is the place where I can grow and I can learn. I love the family environment. And I knew Sacred Heart was the perfect place for me to be. I cannot imagine being anywhere else but Sacred Heart High School. Inclusive, supportive, academic success, community. They're the best kids in the world. This is the oldest, actually, if I'm not mistaken, it's the oldest Catholic high school um, in the state of Connecticut, going on near 100 years now. It started uh, back on Wolcott Street in Waterbury, where I was a student. I was there in the 60s. And um, it's just been a continuation of a small Catholic high school um, that offers students in Waterbury and in the suburbs the opportunity to get a faith-based education. Sacred Heart High School was founded in 1922 by Father Fitzgerald. He was up at Sacred Heart Parish on Wolcott Street at the time. And um, the founding educators of our school were the Sisters of Mercy. We started as an all-girls school when we were initially founded. We went co-ed um, in the mid-30s. And then we moved to our current location because we had such an abundance of students in 1975, which we now call our home here on South Elm Street. Sacred Heart High School has a very very, very rich history in terms of legacy families. 65% uh, of us that work at Sacred Heart High School are all graduates of our great school and our sons and daughters and nieces and nephews all come here so it, it, it really is like a family here at Sacred Heart High School. There's so many things that we're involved in. First of all, we try to encourage school spirit here at Sacred Heart and we have a spirit week that we just finished last week which is pretty much um, you know, a whole week of just craziness. You know, There's daily themes, and we try to raise money throughout the week, which goes toward the Student Council Scholarship. Uh, we're a part of the Relay for Life, which is to raise money for the American Cancer Society. We try to go to the soup kitchen um, you know, in the summer and on days off and on vacation. We collect towels for the shelter. We do a casual day, and the funds from the casual day in December go towards buying toys for the kids in the shelter. So we combine with the National Honor Society. They do the clothes, we do the toys. And for our major spring project, we do a, another casual day, and that money is always donated to the Waterbury Campership Fund so that they can help students go to camp throughout the summer. We're very, very active with um, Holy Land, St. Vincent de Paul, where our students are actually out there um, providing assistance, whether it's helping to clean up at Holy Land, whether it's helping to collect socks or towels for St. Vincent de Paul, or going down and lending a hand to serve food. Um, also, many other, there's a, over 72 organizations that our students are actively engaged in the greater Waterbury area. The Waterbury Shelter serves a huge community of people who need that help. So when we give them new towels, it just is something to, you know, kind of help restore dignity. We've done things that we named blessing bags, where we've put together toiletries, uh, you know, mittens, hand warmers, um, hand sanitizer, and we've made bags to give to the shelter as well. So I think that we're, you know, trying to give back to, you know, the community where we live. And also it helps the student council members in the larger Sacred Heart community to kind of be aware that there are people out there that need help. And as a Catholic high school, you know, we really should be giving back to that community. Sacred Heart has a whole host of opportunities. As a Catholic school, we're very immersed in our community, so we're very, very big into community service and giving back. We feel very blessed um, for what we are afforded by being a part of the city of Waterbury. Um, our students um, have a very rigorous curriculum here at Sacred Heart High School, uh, a number of advanced placement courses that they are um, privy to taking. Um, we also have a uh, collaboration with a local health care organization that allows our students to go in and have the opportunity to see firsthand what it's like to work in the medical field. Uh, we've been growing, which is great for a small school. Um, we've been obviously always known for our cheerleading 
swimming, both the guys and the girls, and uh, boys and girls basketball. Um, but uh, we just had girls volleyball, uh, our indoor track team has just been lights out, and, and our outdoor track team, volleyball will go full varsity this coming uh, season. Um, everything's just, just been doing really well. Boys soccer, we had monumental numbers over the last couple of years, so um, the only thing we really probably could use, but don't know if we'd ever get it, would be lacrosse. But uh, if there's a sport that you like, for the most part, uh, we've got it. Here at the Heart, we've had a program in place, a course in place called Video Production, where students create news programs once a month and they air for our student body. This year, we've invested in some equipment to do podcasting. So our forum, the school newspaper, is moving to doing podcasting articles and putting the links on our online newspaper. So that is a new and different way of getting our students engaged in using technology in, the real, in a real world event or task. Um, and it's been very well received. And again, we've put into place some robotics um, programs where students will come in during study halls into the media center and build robots and test robots. We've also are starting a computer coding class um, and we will be doing AP computer science principles in the fall so to get more kids involved and engaged in technology and coding and all of those things that go along with it. The Sacred Heart family is a very close-knit family between teachers and faculty, administration and students. I think all of the faculty and the administration are invested in the whole student rather than just part of the student. The Sacred Heart family is hard to describe. You really kind of feel like you're just part of such a strong community that's built on rich traditions and the feeling of the community in Sacred Heart does not end when you graduate. I've been out of the heart for four years and I can still walk in and feel like I'm at home. The environment that the faculty and staff provide for the students make coming to school each day something to look forward to. I love knowing that the kids realize now and understand that it's not about the money for most of us in this building. It truly is about them. And I think that they appreciate that because they see that there are a lot of educators, but not all give the same way that we do here at the Heart. I graduated from Sacred Heart, as I said, in, in the late 70s. Um, we were a family back then, we were a family today. Certainly some things have changed, but many of the things that made Sacred Heart High School so special um, still, you know, are in the hallways as you, you go through Sacred Heart. Everybody has each other's back. There's no cliques. It's, um, it's something where everyone's supportive, uh, you know, from our uh, administration to our faculty to our coaches. It's something that's part of who we are, not just a tagline. So in the city of Waterbury, there's about 10 high schools. So we had, I had a bunch to choose from, but I chose Sacred Heart because when I toured there, it felt, it felt right. And I felt like this is a place where I can grow and I can learn. Sacred Heart started participating in the MS Walk my freshman or sophomore year. Um, so we actually got involved with that because of the team I'm a part of actually. It's called Sully Shamrocks. Um, it's really close to me, me because my, it's my aunt's team. My aunt was diagnosed with MS in 2008 and the Sacred Heart community jumped right to the jumped right to it and we had about maybe 30 or 40 students show up at our first walk. Um, and I thought that was really cool because they didn't have to do that. They just, they wanted to out of the like, kindness and goodness of their heart. Um, and still to this day, we still have Sacred Heart students who, to this day, I've been out of the school four or five years and I don't know these kids anymore and they still show up. And I hope for years to come that Sacred Heart students still participate as much as we did back in the day and even to this day now. We seem to get the best kids we possibly can. That's what it is to see someone grow and develop so they might be great in the classroom, but you know what they can do on the soccer pitch or, or on the diving board or on the baseball diamond. You know, National Honor Society, they're so proud that all that hard work paid off. Volunteering and like, man, you know, I didn't realize that this is what people are struggling and going through at the soup kitchen. I mean, it's really just um, an education that's not just in the classroom, but it's in, in a lot of different arenas. We call ourselves the little engine that could because we're small. Uh, we're in a location, we're not on a campus, but we still, everything that happens in this building is superior and students leave here with everything they need. And they also get exposed to what the real life is like on the outside by going out from this school on a daily basis, by seeing the, the people 
uh, of all races and religions and, and people down and out that uh, the, the shelter is right down the street from us. So they get to observe these types of things and it helps make them a better person and helps them want to be a more giving person. So we kind of feel it's a plus. Yeah, three, two, one. Save our high school.